Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Josh Keatley and today I'm going to be explaining the Black Ops 3 campaign ending to you. So at the very end of Black Ops 3 campaign, you can see Taylor and Corvus fighting and Taylor's trying to tell you to, you know, purge your DNI with Corvus's DNI. And then at 100% purge, when you walk out the building, the soldier asks what your name is and you say Taylor. Now why does your character say his or her name depending on what gender you pick? His name is Taylor. So in order to understand the ending of the Black Ops 3 campaign, we have to first go back to the very beginning and understand what happens. You actually die at the very beginning of the game. Now with that robot, you know, ripping your arms and your legs off with nobody else in the area, you know, you're going to bleed to death. Taylor eventually showed up, but how long did it take him to show up? But that's not the important part. How we know that you died is before every single mission there is a briefing that scrolls by the screen way too fast to read and before every single mission they have these it's not really a mission briefing it's more of a journal log by John Taylor which later on talks about his romance with Kane how they broke up all types of cool stuff I'm gonna be talking that in the video make sure to keep watching so in the very first mission briefing slash John Taylor's journal it says the sole survivor of the Hendrix team was taken taken to the Zurich facility to undergo emergency life-saving procedures. They're talking about you. After being stabilized, they were quickly identified as a potential candidate for the expansion of the cyber ops program and fitted with DNI. And that explains, you know, how we got DNI, everything like that. So we didn't die immediately. You know, we went under undergo emergency life-saving procedures. They put the DNI into our character. Where am I? It's okay. Calm down. Just relax. You're gonna be fine. You got smarter than you. Achieved our objectives. A man's always gonna be better than machine. But unfortunately, you sustained life-threatening injuries. You're stable, but you got a long way to go. Who are you? It's me, Taylor. I think it's time you woke up, don't you? It says, keep reading here, prior to limb replacement surgery and full body augmentation, I personally interface to assist with their interrogation, acclimation, and training. So here we're laying in the hospital, we're, you know, undergoing life-saving procedures and service with DNI, and John Taylor is training us. And that's where you go into the second mission. You know, it's all about training, learning the DNI, the train go booms, you know, all those mission was just training that John Taylor was taking you through. Do you know what's happening to you? Am I dreaming? Well, let's say you are. Why not just go with it, right? After all, you can always wake up. But let's keep reading on. John Taylor says they had potential. Unfortunately, complications arose during the procedure. They were pronounced dead shortly thereafter. The whispers in your ear. This shit happens. The doctor can straighten it out. You just need to recalibrate your meds. Trust me, you're gonna be fine. Now there's even these flashbacks in the game that constantly shows you in the hospital and there's a certain one where John Taylor you know looks like he's really upset he's fighting with the doctors and on the last scrolling text you know John Taylor's journal he says hey are you still with us I need you to focus on me come back to me you can't do this don't shut it down don't you dare shut it down so he's really mad at the doctors for you know calling it quits on their patient and this is where your player dies so this entire game you're going through the training you know that John Taylor is taking you through and you're getting interfaced by John Taylor now we know from when we interface with Sarah Hall you get to understand everything about that person you relive their story what happened when you interface someone and they show you some of their fears and they kind of twist the story a little bit you can think of Sarah Hall took you to the World War II battlefield somewhere that she has 
never been. She just read about it in her training. And this is exactly what's happening throughout the whole storyline. The very first mission is real. But then the rest of the story, you're retelling the story through John Taylor interfacing you. What is happening to me? Right now, right now, you're in a medically induced coma being prepped for surgery. You've got a new bit of hardware inside your head. It's called a direct neural interface, or DNI. I've got one, too. That's how I'm able to communicate with you. Your DNI is what connects your mind with your new body and the larger world around you. We're connected. All of this is a simulation inside our minds. Now let's go ahead and talk about someone called Dylan Stone. Now you're wondering who the hell is Dylan Stone. I've never heard that name before. It's nowhere to be found in the campaign. But in the pre-mission text that scrolled by, it mentions Dylan Stone in almost every single one. And in the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 comic book, Dylan Stone is one of the main characters. He's basically the villain in the story. I'm going to go ahead and read some of that text again on the second to the last mission and it says pawn cornering stone on the nrc veto landing pad at the top of lotus tower 2 we are involved in a major firefight that resulted in a significant damage to the surrounding structures it was at this time that I was incapitated after sustaining serious injuries i was saved only by the intervention of hendrix who despite all his prior doubts was the one who finally terminated our target now we know in the campaign how the story went down you know Stone was not in the picture at all. You know, John Taylor's log, Stone was the one operating the veto warship, you know, just tearing everything up. In the campaign, it's John Taylor, the one that's out of control, shooting up everything with the veto warship, trying to kill the player. And then at the very end, your player, you know, has a knife in them and they can't move. Then Hendrix comes in and shoots Taylor. Well, in this story, is Taylor that, you know, can't move and Hendrix comes in and shoots shoot stone so the, the biggest plot difference here and this happens throughout the entire story and that's why they don't mention stone when your player does the dni purge the interface we're now retelling john taylor's story but with a different plot twist and john taylor or the player whichever one is controlling this virtual reality world putting for some reason john taylor as the villain instead of dylan stone now just to confirm that taylor did not die it was dylan stone that died prove this by going into the cia computer database you go to code Press right bumper to open up bookmarks. Go down to Welcome to the Winslow Accord, Project Prometheus. You move your little cursor around, click on Project Prometheus. Project Prometheus is basically getting the DNI, you know, step four right here, getting DNI. It's basically everything to do with that. And look, there's a lot of steps. But let's go to candidates. Right here we can see the four people that do actively have it. You know, it's John Taylor, Sarah Hall, Moretti, and Diaz. Then we see some people that got rejected and deceased. So let's click on John Taylor. And here it says transferred to Covert Ops Pi 2058. Covert Ops Team Pi shut down 2064. So let's go ahead and click on Pi. And once again, this was the team that John Taylor joined up with his covert ops team under the Winslow Accord. So his team consisted of, you know, we see at the very tops, Hendrix, John Taylor, he was the XO, the commander in charge. And the very next name down, Dylan Stone, right here, deceased. So here you can see Taylor is alive. It says active. And if you go down, Dylan Stone deceased that's because in the real world Dylan Stone was the one that Hendrix shot at the very end not John Taylor we click on Dylan Stone I wish I had a picture for him but it does not but tells everything you know about him and that he was transferred to covert ops team 5 2058 he was killed in action 2064 and that is where the campaign ends. That's where the Phi team ends. And that is where Hendrix shot Dylan Stone and killed him. And 
You see Ramirez died as well. All these guys were part of the team. So when it comes down to it, everybody on the team died except only two people who survived was Hendricks and Taylor. Here is the client, certain people you know that you are out to kill. So here that you see Hendricks, the team, you know, killed this person, but Patel died during that mission. None of this really matters. All the way down to the bottom, very, very bottom, there is Dylan Stone. The team that killed him was Hendrix and Taylor. That's at the very end of the campaign. Like I said, when Hendrix shoots Taylor, that's really not what's happening at all. Your player is actually Taylor, and you're watching Hendrix kill Dylan Stone. That is what really happened. Now, with Dylan Stone in the picture, everything connects. Everything makes sense now. At the very end of the game, you know, I was reading the comments of people, you know, and other videos of people saying that you are Taylor. And to me, this made absolutely no sense because there's so many missions where you're out to find Taylor where's Taylor at we got to kill Taylor and if you are Taylor you know that would make absolutely no sense and there's certain missions where you know your team of your player Hendrix and Kane sometimes Lieutenant Kali you know that is your team that's the group that you're with and Taylor has his own group you know he's with Diaz, Moretti, Sarah Hall and there's a certain scene where you're in the helicopter and they announce that Dr. Salim is dead or he's about to die. Shit. Okay. We just lost the doctor's vitals. What the hell does that mean? It means he's dead or about to be dead. And then Sarah Hall comes out and attacks the helicopter with her machine that she's in. But then when you interface Sarah Hall, you get to see her scene that's happening at the exact same time of Dr. Salim's death. So in the interface, Taylor tells Sarah Hall, you know, to go take care of us. And then he kills Dr. Salim. Control program. Taylor, we got incoming. Hall, suit up. Deal with it. What do you want from me? Thank you. Now, if you are Taylor, that is pretty impossible to be in two places at the exact same time. There's no way that you could be inside the helicopter saying that Dr. Salim is about to die and be the one inside the building shooting Dr. Salim at the same time. That makes absolutely no sense. But when you add Dylan Stone to everything, it all makes sense. You throughout the entire campaign don't even exist you just cross yourself off you're not really in the story except for the first mission so if you put taylor in your place let's say you're in that helicopter with kane and hendrix and then dylan stone is the one that shoots dr salim and tells sarah hall to go take care of you guys then it all makes sense now Dylan Stone isn't the only person that's different from the scrolling text compared to the players that you see in the campaign. The scrolling text mentions all four of these guys, Dylan Stone, Joseph Fierro, Alice Conrad, and Xavier Ramirez. Now you can see the order in which Hendrix and Taylor kill them, and if you follow the order in the campaign you can tell who each person is. Like the first person that you kill that's part of the Winslow Accord part of your team in the campaign is Sebastian Diaz. Sebastian Diaz is actually Xavier Ramirez in real life or according to the scrolling text John Taylor's log. Sarah Hall is actually Alice Conrad. Peter Moretti is actually Joseph Ferrio. And of course, John Taylor is Dylan Stone. Like I said, it goes in order from which you kill them. If we go back and we look at the five team, all these guys are on your team, part of the Winslow Accord. Now what happened that you separated where Hendrix and Taylor are not with them? And that has everything to do with the glitch in the system, Corvus. So who really is Diaz, Hall, and Moretti? in the campaign why are they there why are there characters that we see now if you take a look again at the project prometheus and you take a look at the candidates it says active duty ops four and here we have all four names that we play in as the campaign taylor sarah hall peter moretti and sebastian diaz 
Now, is it kind of a coincidence that all these four characters got DNI put into them? And that is the four characters that got their name changed. So I think that has everything to do with Corvus, the glitch in the system, messing with their mind while they're going through the DNI process. And maybe that's Corvus, the glitch in this, the system, purposely putting those people in there, trying to change their past, trying to change something to do with their mind, changing their memories. Now let's go ahead and talk about the different missions, the order that they go in. All the missions really aren't in order, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And that's where they really try to twist things around, really confuse you. Because, you know, the first mission is the actual mission where your player is alive. The second mission, you're in the hospital. It even says in the briefing, undergo surgery, rehabilitation, and training for a potential introduction into the Winslow Accord Cyber Soldier Program. Success is not guaranteed. And we know, you know, what happens there. But then in darkness, if you look at the scrolling text, that's when it says day zero. And it keeps counting up the days, one, two, three, all the way up until seven, being Lotus Tower. And the zero through seven days, that really is reliving John Taylor's memory. Now, I've been asking my, myself this question forever. Why are we reliving John Taylor's memories and not the players? John Taylor is the one that interfaced the player wouldn't we remember the players memories but if the player is dying you know maybe their memories aren't strong enough to carry that out maybe that's why we're reliving John Taylor's instead of the players or maybe it's something to do with the infection and how a lot of a lot of these memories get twisted you know they, they constantly twist all the players around and that probably has to do something with Corvus the infection too and you see, you know, the seventh one is really the, the very last one. That's where John Taylor at the end, which is the player, as we know, gets injured. Then he goes through the Winslow Accord Cyber Soldier Program. And that's part of the reason Kane left him because she didn't want him to go through with that. But he did anyhow. We're going to get to that, their love relationship, just a second here. So John Taylor gets injured. At the very last mission, which is really Lotus Tower, life is really your player dying. And there's really two different stories. There's your player dying and there's the infection, you know, taking over, taking its place. That's what the whole life thing is about, is, is fighting that DNI infection and fighting Corvus, who is, you know, the glitch in the system. So after Lotus Towers, after after John Taylor and Hendrix go their separate ways, it talks about that in the scrolling text. It goes back to the very beginning. The very beginning is actually what happens last in the story. And we know this by Lieutenant Kali and his uprising. Now let's talk about Lieutenant Kali being the hero of the Cairo Uprising. So the first time that you meet Kali, seems like your player, which is really Taylor, is the only one that knows him. Lieutenant Khalil? We were told you were coming. We have your prisoner. We appreciate your help. Especially as we're not exactly on the books. Good to see you, Khalil. We'd hoped you'd bring reinforcements. Drones, robots, munitions. Anything. Then Lieutenant Khalil starts talking about the Cairo Uprising, which the NRC is helping to hide John Taylor. So they need this uprising. They need the civilians to help them out to take back the city so that they can get John Taylor. Or Darren Stone, I guess, in the actual world. Once Hakim is dead, we get to the security station. Then we drop the death system. Then the uprising will truly begin. I don't give a shit about your uprising. What? How the hell did you? Citizens of Cairo, now is your time. Take back your city. The NRC are in disarray, but they will soon regroup. Brothers, let us take back our city! 
Sandra, I need reinforcements at my location. Heavy NRC forces have surrounded us. Lieutenant Khalil, respond. We've lost comms. Too much interference. Lieutenant Khalil's AO is compromised. We lost comms and visuals. He's been captured by the NRC. We try to locate him. Dave, we have to help Khalil. We wouldn't have gotten this far if it wasn't for him. I know. But we need to stop Taylor. All monitor NRC comms. So this was in the very last mission of the game, Lotus Towers. We're going to forget about life. That's really not the last mission in the main story. So you can see right before we get into our fight with John Taylor, Lieutenant Kali is captured by the NRC. And then what happens the very first mission, you're in the NRC building. You're dressed like the NRC, pretending to be them, and you're rescuing. Minister said, and then he even know about Lieutenant Khalil, but we do rescue Lieutenant Khalil. What about Lieutenant Khalil and the others? Sorry, no time. Khalil was a hero of the Cairo uprising. You know that makes him a valuable asset for their propaganda. They will make an example of him. Minister. Khalil. Uh, Hendrix. Can you fight Khalil? Always. Package plus one, secure and inbound. Plus one. Your orders were to extract the minister. His name is Lieutenant Khalil. Sound familiar? Get moving. We'll see you topside. So all this in the first mission really takes place last at the very end of the story. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Taylor and Kane romance that's going on. Now your player is Taylor. So I think where the Taylor Kane romance kind of starts is when Hendrix and Taylor is pinned down and then Kane comes to the rescue. And pay attention to the bandana. You notice the bandana around her neck. What the hell? You guys okay back there? Agent Kane? I thought I told you to stay up top. Seemed like you could use some help. Besides, you two made so much noise, every 54 I foot soldier is going to be scrambling to respond. We need to get back on track. We've got to shut down their comms before they figure out what the fuck's going on. Follow me. After you. Then Taylor turns around and saves Kane. You stop them. You need to get out of Singapore. Hang in there, Kane. We're coming for you. Hey, now what? Now we get Kane. Fuck. I guess the mission's over. Find us transport for extraction, Hendrix. You're kidding me, right? She's toast. There's still a chance. Hey! Do you hear me? She's dead! Accept it! Got something to say, Hendrix? Now in John Taylor's log, the scrolling text before the mission, it says personal comment, Hendrix continues to theorize about a CIA conspiracy of some kind. He has begun to ask questions about my relationship with LNO, going as far to support that I may be emotionally compromised. For the record, while I do feel a strong personal connection with Kane, it is neither sexual nor romantic in nature. My only focus is the mission. Now there is some 
sometimes that you see Kane without the bandana on. And I think what this means is those events didn't really happen. When you see her with the bandana, that's something that's actually happening, that actually did happen in John Taylor's memory. When you see her without the bandana, it's kind of the glitch, kind of your player changing the memories a little bit. Stay with me. Free! <coughs> Why? Why were my systems shutting down? I checked your diagnostics. You're showing the same symptoms as Hendrix. Probably the same as Taylor's team. <sighs> symptoms of what? I think the AI software running the Black Project made the leap to organic. Your DNI was the gateway. It was born inside the test subjects, and now it lives inside all of you, slowly taking control, slowly driving you insane. How slowly? Maybe days, maybe hours. It seems to be a distributed system, a hive mind growing from the experiences of everyone it infects, consuming them. Listen to me. However this thing works, whatever it wants, I'm still me. Taylor. We'll find him. And if it's the only way to stop him is with a bullet in his head, I'll do it. He's not the only one. If the time comes, I'll do what needs to be done. We can find another way. A way outside the military, outside the CIA. There are places we can go, places we can be safe. Please, listen to me. Stay with me. If you go through with this, I can't be with you. This is the only way. It's going to change you. And quicker than you think. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Life will fade away. This is who I am, Rachel. Just don't forget me. Don't forget the person that you were. So this takes place right after the very last mission, the Lotus Towers. Taylor gets his arm hurt, you know, that's where the knife is stuck in his arm. And you know, he's severely injured, so he has to go through surgery. And this is where they put him through the DNI, the Cyber Soldier Program. And Kane definitely disagreed with it, that's one of the reasons they broke up. And you notice that bandana around her neck, she leaves that on the table, she leaves that for Taylor. So if you look at the scroll in text, John Taylor's personal comment he says my relationship with our former LNO Rachel Kane is over our fundamental disagreements about our respective futures in the military close the door to any future we might have it may not have worked out but I have no doubt that I've made the right decision I look forward to continuing to serve my country and her allies Taylor out now if we go back to the very first mission, this is what actually happened after Lotus Towers, after John Taylor's surgery. You can see him wearing the bandana that Rachel Kane gave to him and he has it on his left arm and that is where he would have been hurt from Lotus Tower. The knife was stuck in there so he probably put that bandana over his injury. And then he talks to Hendrix about breaking up with Rachel Kane. Nice to see you, Jacob. You too, John. You look... You look different. You still seeing Rachel? That didn't work out. That's a pity. Mm -hmm. yeah. No blood? Gonna take care of him as good as you did me? That's not funny, man. 
Now something that I don't fully understand is in John Taylor's log, the very first mission, he says the sole survivor of Hendrick's team. Now sole survivor means just one person survived. The sole survivor of Hendrick's team. Now when you start the NRC mission, you know, it's you and Hendrix. So I don't see how there's only one survivor of his team. And then it goes on to talk plural, like there's more than one. It says, I personally interfaced to assist with their integration. And then it says, they had potential and they were pronounced dead shortly thereafter. When you use the word they, you know, you're definitely not meaning one person. So who else was getting fitted with DNI at the same time? Hendrix was. So did Hendrix die? Everything so far is pointing to yes. If you look in the CIA thing, now it doesn't say that he's dead. That's what I'm kind of confused about too. But if you look who all has the DNI, it has four active, and I already talked about the four active people that have the DNI, and then it says two. It says ongoing procedures, zero, and then in post-op care too. So in the CIA computer system, it's showing that Hendrix is alive and there's two people in post-op care. Now this kind of contradicts what Taylor said. In Taylor's log, it says they were pronounced dead shortly thereafter. So did just one person die, your player? Did both of you die, your player and Hendrix? Did both players die, you and Hendrix? Or did John Taylor just lie in his journal and they're both actually still alive? Now also pointing to evidence that Hendrix is dead is when you take a look at Taylor, you know, being upset in the hospital, you know, pushing and shoving at the doctors. Now in the very first mission, he just met the player. He, he says something about the new blood. You know, Taylor doesn't know your player. Now, why would Taylor be getting this upset over, you know, your player dying when Taylor doesn't know your player? And Taylor's killed a lot of people. He's seen a lot of people die. He's not going to get that upset over somebody he doesn't know. But if it is Hendrix, on the other hand, he knows Hendrix really well. They got into a lot of fights throughout the campaign, but overall, they were pretty good friends. And I think Taylor would be pretty upset if Hendrix died. And that kind of leads me to think, thinking that maybe Hendrix did die. That would be the only reason Taylor would be up that upset. Definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I know this is extremely long. I've been working on this for so many hours, so many days. Definitely make sure to press that like button if you are still watching. I really do appreciate it. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching my video. And you have a great day today.